A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, gird your loins and light your lamps. Be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his arrival. Amen, I say to you, he will gird himself, have the servants recline at table and proceed to wait on them. And should he come in the second or third watch and find them prepared in this way, blessed are those servants. Be sure of this, if the master of the house had known the hour when the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You must also be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. The Gospel of the Lord. A quick biblical thought, and then a rather sobering thought. Matthew and Luke both write their gospel in the mid-80s. Matthew writes to a Jewish audience who believed that Jesus was the Messiah. And they both take this parable and treat it very differently. For Matthew, the virgins wait up all night with their candles burning, and some of the foolish ones fall asleep. Why? Because Matthew writes to Jewish people who have been waiting for centuries for the Messiah, and so they're always trying to be vigilant. Luke, on the other hand, gives us a Jesus who serves, and so we're told in Luke's treatment today that when the master comes, the first thing he will do is have the servants recline at table and he will wait on them. If there was ever a moment in our history when we need a gospel to remind us how to take care of one another better, it is right now. These mass shootings are becoming a weekly occurrence in America. They could happen anywhere. God forbid it could happen here in Erie, and we need to get a handle on it. We need to begin by stopping all of this inflammatory rhetoric of hatred that is floating around in America today, where we demonize people. We demonize the poor, the black, the Muslim, the immigrant. That's not who we are as Americans. We care for one another. As a Christian, I don't have the right to demonize anyone. We are all God's creatures. And furthermore, we have these psychopaths in our society today who are filled with loathsome and hatred for particular people. And when they hear this inflammatory rhetoric of hatred out there, they begin to say to themselves, you know what, I'm right. Maybe if I murder some of these people, I'll become a hero. We need to stop this rhetoric now. Secondly, we need to be much more judicious in whom we elect to be our representatives in Washington. It seems that the people we elect go to Washington and sit on opposite sides of the aisle and do nothing but spit at one another. We need to elect officials who despite their political differences can come together and work for the common good. We need to have legislation that will ban these assault weapons from our streets. There's nothing wrong with anyone owning a gun, but why do we have to have these weapons of mass destruction and then they end up in the hands of these psychopaths? We need to have people sit down together and come up with an immigration policy that can protect our borders and yet allow immigrants and refugees in because that's who America is. Moment. And if we don't get a handle on it, America could be destroyed not from without, but from within. And I think it calls us first and foremost to a sense of patriotism. Who are we and what do we believe as Americans? As Christians, it calls us to a deep abiding sense of prayer that God can help us overcome this threat to our future. And so I pray with you, O oh beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountain majesty above the fruited plain. America, America, God shed his grace on thee. 
and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. O beautiful for pilgrims' feet, whose stern impassioned stress, a thoroughfare for freedom beat across the wilderness, America, America, God mend thine every flaw, confirm thy soul in self-control, thy liberty in law. Amen.